Okay, so start with a light point. So we're going to make a texture and click on the light glow to the right hand side. And at the moment it gives you a, an optical effect. So when you actually press render, it will render out a light glow for you, which will also act as a particle texture for you. So if you just get rid of the points, you end up with a default texture. Yeah? But at the moment that's just too big. So what we need to do is change that from linear to a ball. So when you render it out, you get a ball like texture. Yeah? Yeah? So what we can do is we can scale that up a bit. So on your light pot optical effect. Um, how can we do this? No. Just bear with me a minute. Spread, spread, frequency. That's better. So, if you put the glow spread up to two, yeah, it makes a bit more of a ball for you, a bit, bit of a bigger size. So, just on the optical effect where you've got your light glow, click on the checkerboard to the right hand side, that's it, and that will give you a light glow. Yeah, then put the glow spread up to about two, up to two. Yeah, so we need to file save save this as yeah. File save image. Save image. We're going to save this as a TGA. A target file, and you're just going to name it default. Target file, yeah. Target file. Okay. <coughs> Save as default. Then we can get rid of that. Just do file new. And normally with texture sizes. When you do those, because we've just done a texture size that's 640 by 480, yeah. Normally, when you're doing your texture sizes, you start from 16, 32, 64, 1 to 8, 256, 1024. If you go any higher, then you're going to get a hit with your graphics card, yeah. So, by default, things like rain, you want them about 32 by 32 pixels. Yeah, because they're that small, or you see them as a streak, might go to 64 bit. But anything for your default texture, just do it about 1 to 8, 64 by 64, or 1 to 8 by 1 to 8. Right? It doesn't matter for what we're doing, all purposes for today. We're just going to be using one images for the, for this. All right. So, again, new scene. Make sure you're on effects, and we're going to go to
here we go then. So we're going to create emitter. We're going to be an uh, anomaly one for the moment. We can change this later. But at the moment we want to set it to sprites. Yeah. And when we hit play, we just see a load of, as I say, polygons. Flat polygons. So in order to get our texture in, we need to go and get our up to our hyper shade, which is the green ball with the green brackets, yeah. And we need to create a Lambert, a new Lambert shader. Sorry. So news. That's um, that's because you've created. Sorry. I'll start again. It's because you start again. So we got n particles. We're creating an emitter, not an uh, not a uh, yeah. It's using a legacy particle, yeah, not an n particle. Create an emitter. When you go over to your emitter, go select the particle. Particle shape one, and we go down to the render attributes where the points are, and we set them to sprites. Yeah, set them to sprites. So when they press play, you see the polygons because they are literally. If you press three on your keyboard, you'll see, or four on your keyboard, sorry, you'll see that they're just wireframe flat polygons. Okay, so go to your hypershade now, which is the green brackets with the sphere in them. Yep, hypershade, and we're going to create a Lambert, new Lambert material. And we're just going to name this default. 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 Okay. And we click on our transparency. And we go to File. And then we go and get our default texture. Click on our default texture, hit OK. Yeah. Then we can select our particles and then we right click and uh, assign those material to our particles. Now we don't see them because we haven't got textures on. But if you hit 6 on your keyboard, you'll then see the default texture on your particles. Everybody got that? So again. Okay. I'll start again. So you have you made the texture?
So that's the default texture setup. Everybody else all right? Okay, so this is how this is what you would see in a games engine, yeah. So then you can go back to your emitter, yeah. Go back to your actual emitter when it decides to go. Come on, come on. Oh, good. Hey. Okay, we'll try we'll we'll try another one. Who likes Disney films? You know at the start where you see the castle and you see the particles go over the top of uh the castle at the beginning. We'll do that. Okay? So what we need to do is again we'll create the texture first yeah create the texture uh, so I need to create a light again looks like this computer is playing up now point light again light effects add a glow now at the moment if you do that we need to change our render settings and instead of the being 960 by 540 we need to change these to 512 by 512 so it's square so when we render them that's what we'll see So in our globals, all I've gone and done is change the rendering settings to 512 by 512. Now I just need to change the star points to 6. So I've got something like that. Okay, so just file if you've got the star glow with six stars on it just do file save image as we need to change that to a targa dot tga So we need to, once we've got our actual texture, we need to edit this into um, that's right. Do 
Do you want me to do it again? File, new scene. New scene. And my, oh, there we go. Create, light, point light, add the light glow on the right hand side where the checker box is. Yeah. So where it says for on the actual optical effect, where it says star points, change that to six. And then you should go up to your render settings. Make sure you set the actual image width to 512 to 512 so that you get a square image. Just close that. Hit render and that's what you'll get. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to fi save that image. File, save image. Star glow. Set it to TGA. Star glow. Yeah. Now we need to take this into Photoshop. So you just bring that into Photoshop and it should be alright actually. It may be alright. Okay. Alright. If you've done that, just save that image, yeah? And we'll do this again. So, File New. Once you've got the image, File New. Don't save. So we need to create an emitter. Whoops, I'm in modeling. Create an emitter. Again, change it on the particle shape. So we're going to call this um, what? Star emitter. We'll call them stars. Now at the moment they live forever, so we're going to put them on constant straight away. Yeah. I'll wait.
Okay, so go down to the render attributes and change them to sprites. Yeah. Press play again. Again, go to your hyper shade. Yep. Create a Lambert. And we're then going to add incandescence. Click on the checkerboard to the right hand side of incandescence. Go to the file type from the render node window file type and then go and find your star glow which is in your default images folder Then it then it will glow. God, this is going taking ages. Come on. So that's what you end up with. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. It's just a question of practicing. Just practice. No.
Yeah, no problem. Not a problem. It's all on video anyway, so you can catch up with it at some other point. Okay. No problem. Have a good rest of the day. <laughs> you just go to your um, incandescent on your Lambert 2 here. Yeah? Incandescent, it should be there. So then you go to your file to where it is. So select the file. Yeah. Go to the glow, yeah, and then just hit open. That should be it. And then all you have to do is assign that to the particles then. And that's it. Assign. No, go. That's it. Keep it held down. Right, right click. Right click on your mouse. That's it. Assign. That's it. That's it. And then hit six on your keyboard in the view, make sure you clicked in the view and then hit 6. That's it. Your stars are there but you've not got it, you've not set it as a TGA. Yeah? Okay, so got to do mine again. Sorry, Yakim. Okay, so we're going to do some nice, cool, curvy motion paths now. So just let me get back to where I was.
Okay. So, what we need to do now is we need to go pretty wild. In the top view, you're going to create a go into curve settings and just do a EP curve tool. Yeah. Click on the third one. Third one in. Yeah. EP curve tool and just start laying down points really randomly. Yeah. Really randomly. I'm going to show you a really nice technique in a minute. Yeah. Okay. So just hit return at the end, and then what you can do with the curve, if you go to you know modeling uh, curves, and then you can just go to the curves tab, and you can open and close that curve. So if you hit open and close, it will then close that curve off. All right. That's the curves tool. That's under model modeling. Yeah. So we can go back to our uh we can edit that now. If you hit um F eight on your keyboard, yeah. If you open and close the curve, yeah. Then once you've done that, hit F eight on your keyboard and then you can select you go into component mode on the curve and then you can select points and with your and with your transformation you can move those points in to smooth whoops smooth areas out that's with your W on your keyboard to hit the transformation node right now here's a tip Whenever you do a motion path like this, you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to cycle through points on the actual curve. Yeah? And you can forward and backwards along the motion path just by hitting the arrow keys on your keyboard. Hit F8. Yeah, you need to select one. Just just click on one. Yeah? then you can hit the arrow keys on your keyboard yeah make sure you've got hit w on your keyboard for transformation yeah so you shouldn't see the transformation manipulator come up now with the little arrow blue and uh, yellow arrows all right hit back to your perspective view yeah using the alt key and your left mouse button you can now pan around uh, the view, yeah. So you can now move those points up in in space. And if you hit the control, the arrow keys, yeah, you can then start moving those points around. So you get more of a three-dimensional. I'm just altering it really randomly. Some I move up, the opposite ones I move down. So it creates a bit of a roller coaster effect. So end up something pretty much like that. And if you hit 3, it will smooth out that curve for you. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So pretty much like what we did with the actual 
NURB circle with the emitter we're going to do the same thing so make sure you put a few more frames in your timeline put about 500 in yeah in your timeline so what we're going to do is hit F8 again select your emitter and your curve go to animation or rigging sorry go to rigging and then go to your constrain tab on your uh, top of your menu and you're going to go past the create where it goes to motion paths and you're just going to attach it to the motion path okay yeah so now now when you press play you've now got pixie dust going along a motion path Is that cool? Should be. How many frames did you put in? Should be putting about 500. Well done. Well done.
of the same things, like adding colour and scale to the actual pack pick. Do you want to do that now? Yeah? So, what we need to do is, we can add a colour. It's the same thing. We add per particle. And we can add opacity as well. And again, we add per particle. Again, we right click and we create a ramp. And then we edit that ramp. Oops. Again, we can change our opacity to create a ramp as well. Just need to edit that as well. And then for the size, what do we add for the size? What do we add for the size? It's not radius PP. You have to use the sprites one. Yeah? You've got sprite scale X and you've got sprite, sprite scale XPP and sprite scale YPP. So if we just do the first one, and we add that, and we add the sprite scale YPP as well. Now we only have to do this once, yeah, because then we can add, add um, a script in the first one. So XPP or YP and YPP, yeah. And what I'm going to show you to do is how to um, add a script. then close that 
so you should have RGB PP, opacity PP, which are both ramps, yeah, to whatever. The, uh, the opacity is just grayscale, so it goes from white to black, yeah, so it fades off. But the other color can be anything you like. So what we're going to do with the XPP is you're going to right click and create an expression. Yeah. So you're going to highlight the particle shape one, copy that, yeah, and add that to the expression. And we're going to put equals rand open bracket one comma three close bracket semicolon. We're not going to stop there though. Yeah? Because what we're going to do then is then we're going to re hit return. We're going to hit paste again. And we're going to change the sprite scale XPP to sprite scale YPP capital Y we're going to hit a space bar again hit equals and then we just hit paste again and then end semicolon do you know what we've done there? yeah? Well done. You you get a gold star. <laughs> so all you need to do is hit create and then you'll see both expressions come up in the uh, attribute window. Yeah. So when you press now, when you see the effect now, you should now see it scaling the sprites from a value from 1 to 3 in both directions. Do you like that? How about that? That's three things in the space of five minutes. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Do you like that, Yakim? Yeah. What you need to do with that now is just check your opacity. Is it a ramp? Check your edit the ramp. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this should add to your levels and yeah this is the glamour the glitz and glamour that you add to your levels that a lot of games developers and games companies forget right at the very end when they think it, something's missing yeah did you like that like that. So scripting is really, really powerful. Yeah? It can save you and cut a lot of corners for you. Yeah? Just with knowing a little bit gives you a lot, of, lot, lot more power. <laughs> yeah? Now, 
The only thing that goes with this is that this is how you see it in the workspace. But if you to render this out, you don't see anything because it's using the hardware rendered uh, technology. Yeah. No, you have to use the hardware render buffer. But it's been a while since I've used it, and I can't remember how to. They've changed it. They've changed a lot of it. So you have to go into your hardware render buffer and hit render, but it's coming out with a load of squares for some strange reason. It's probably because of the textures that we've used. Hmm. But anyway, so just file save scene as and just call it pixie dust. Yeah? Just make sure you save it as an ASCII file, yeah? So that's two effects you've done today. Alright? And I'm going to stop at that point. Stop.